Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power of 1 over square root of x equals 1 over 16, and we're going to be finding the x values. You can definitely guess and check for a problem like this, but let's make it a little easier. So I'm going to go ahead and ln both sides. ln is the natural logarithm. So ln x to the power 1 over square root of x equals ln 1 over 16. Notice that x needs to be positive. And now we're going to move this number to the front by using properties of logs, 1 over square root of x times ln x equals ln 1 over 16. Now I can write ln 1 over 16 in many different ways, not very many, but a, you know, a couple. But let's go ahead and uh, write the left-hand side as a quotient first, ln x over square root of x equals ln 1 over 16. So now, as far as I can see, there is two ways that we can write ln 1 over 16 as using powers. So I can go with ln 1 half to the fourth power, or I can go with ln 1 fourth squared. All right, so let's call this the first one, and let's call this the second one. Let's go with the first one first. So if we write this as ln x over square root of x equals ln 1 half to the fourth power, then I can go ahead and move the 4 like before, 4 times ln 1 half. And now what I'd like to do is I want to write this as a quotient. So I can do the following, since ln is upstairs or in the numerator, ln 1 half divided by 1 fourth. And then kind of try to find a one-to-one -one correspondence. Again, this is, this is still guess and check, but uh, we're trying to make sure that these two, th uh, you know, things uh, kind of correspond to each other. So, can x equal one half and square root of x equal one fourth at the same time? And the answer is no. But it's just the other way around. So that kind of tells you that number two is supposed to work. So let's go ahead and work with number two, ln x over square root of x equals ln one fourth squared, which can be written as 2 times ln 1 fourth, which can be written as ln 1 fourth over 1 half. Let's go ahead and write it one more time, ln x over square root of x equals ln 1 fourth over 1 half, which you can write as square root of 1 fourth if you want. So this kind of clearly shows you that, okay, x must be 1 fourth, or at least x equals 1 fourth is a solution. So the next question we need to answer is, is that the only solution? Now we know that x equals 1 fourth works, at least we got one solution. Let's go ahead and explore a little further. So I'm going to go ahead and write f of x or define f of x as x to the power 1 over square root of x. I want to differentiate this, use a little bit of calculus. I'm going to show you a table and then uh, we'll take a look at the graph. So let's ln both sides. So ln-ing definitely helps because it, get rid of, uh, it get, gets rid of the exponent, which is a variable in this case. So, you know, you want to bring it down, basically. So ln f of x, we're pretty much doing the same thing as we did before. 1 over square root of x times ln x. And that can be written as ln x over square root of x. So this is ln f of x. And I'd like to differentiate both sides. Now, how do you differentiate ln of a function? We must use the chain rule. And the chain rule says if you have ln of something, a lot of times we use u, then it's u prime divided by u, right? That's how you differentiate the ln function. So it's f prime divided by f. The right-hand side uses the quotient rule, so it's going to be the derivative of ln x multiplied by the square root of x minus the derivative of square root of x times ln x. So u prime v minus v prime u divided by v squared. And in this case, the square root of x squared is just going to be x. Let's simplify, and you can replace f of x with x to the power of 1 over square root of x, by the way. But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. 1 over x times square root of x can be written as 1 over square root of x, and it's actually a good thing to do because we're going to make a common denominator next. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator, uh, which is 2 times square root of x. So we're going to get a 2 here, 
minus ln x, what happened to the denominator? The denominator multiplied the other denominator because you're going to flip and multiply. Come on, that's like arithmetic. And you're going to get 2x square root of x. But that's f prime divided by f. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by f, which is x to the power 1 over square root of x. And then we're going to get f prime by itself. So basically, if you have a function to the power of another function, you can use the ln function to differentiate both sides. Great. So we got the derivative, uh, which is significant, which is important. It's going to be helpful for uh, looking at the behavior of the function. And we're going to be looking at another thing for the behavior of the function, which is the limit. But anyways, let's go ahead and set the derivative equal to zero to find critical points. Critical points are basically where the points at which the derivative uh, fails to exist or the derivative equals zero. They could be maxima, minima, or inflection points. All right, or they could also be um, vertical, um, what is it called? Vertical tangents, okay, something like that. So obviously this can't be zero, so we have to set the numerator equal to zero here, which is two minus ln x. If two minus ln x is equal to zero, that means ln x is equal to two, and x is equal to e squared. Whatever the e is, the Euler's number, 2.7 something, if you square it, 7 point something, I guess, right? Because 2.7 squared is 7.29. How, how do I know that? It's just the power of 9. So, x equals a e squared, so we have a maximum or minima, hopefully, right? Let's go ahead and make a table, x, f prime, f table. We always make these things. Uh, the critical value is e squared, and let's see what happens. If x is greater than e squared, then ln x is going to be greater than 2, and 2 minus ln x is going to be negative, right? So remember, the derivative contains 2 minus ln x, and everything else is positive if x is positive. But of course, x has to be positive, because we said at the beginning, right? So we have a positive minus sign here, not positive, and a plus sign here, which indicates for x values that are less than e squared, our graph is going to increase. And for x values that are greater than e squared, our function is going to decrease, making a maximum point at e squared comma whatever the value of f of e squared is right we can go ahead and find uh, f of e squared by replacing x with e squared in the original function which was f of x was x to the power one over squared of x remember if you replace i'm going to get rid of this okay and let's go ahead and find this first so i'm going to replace x with e squared and this should give me e squared to the power one over square root of e squared, which is e, and that's going to be e to the power 2 over e. So at e squared comma e to the power 2 over e, we have a maximum point or maximum, just local max, whatever. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the limit, and I'll tell you why I'm looking at the limit. What happens if x approaches infinity, uh, the limit of this function? To, in order to understand the limit of this function, we're going to look at the limit of the ln of this function, okay? Uh, and the ln of this function is going to give us the following. Limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over square root of x times ln x. Again, we can write this as limit as x approaches infinity of ln x over square root of x. And guess what? Square root of x is going to grow faster than the ln function because you can use L'Hopital's rule, obviously. But it's going to be zero. This limit is going to be zero, but this is the limit of the ln of the function. So the function itself is just going to be, um, so if the ln of f of x approaches zero, then f of x, which is e to the power ln of f of x, is going to approach e to the power zero, which is one. So the limit of this function as, ep as x approaches infinity is going to be one, which means y equals 1 is going to be a horizontal asymptote, okay? So you have the following picture. I'll show you a graph later on, so this is just a messy sketch. So x equals 1, uh, at y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote. Our function is going to have a value, not a value at 0, but it's going to be, pretend that it starts at 0, 0. And it's going to go up, and then it's going to go down, right? And it's going to make a maximum at e squared. But the thing is, it's going to stay below the uh, horizontal line y equals 1. But we are trying to set this function equal to 1 over 16, and that is below the y equals 1 line. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. This should give you a good idea. 
Notice that they intersect at one point. The, this graph is going to turn later on, but it's never going to intersect because y equals 1, you don't see that here, but this is y equals 1, is a horizontal asymptote. Therefore, the only solution that we have is going to be at 1 over 4, which is the x value right here, and this is x equals 1 over 4. So, four. so the only value that we get from here is going to be x equals 1 fourth and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye